Okay, well, there's a lot of people out there who have been advancing this kind of solipsism kind of argument in terms of something more specifically described as the simulation hypothesis. And as technology has advanced, we can more clearly envision what it would be like to have a fully simulated kind of ex subjective experience where, you know, basically you are a simulated being inside of a, you know, very, very realistic game. Okay. So this is an idea that people like Nick Bostrom and Elon Musk uh, famously have uh, really endorsed this idea that technology is just going to get keep getting better and better, right? Um, of course, that's if we survive. Um, and therefore, you know, at some point, we're going to have really amazing simulations, right? We already have pretty amazing kind of game engines that can do a lot. Uh, and so, you know, if you just kind of project that forward and technology keep getting better and better, if that point comes where we achieve this ability to kind of simulate not only kind of, you know, uh, reality to some level of kind of, you know, uh, detail, but really also the subjective experience consciousness, we can simulate consciousness. We would want to do that because, you know, it would be amazing. And then, I guess, I'm not sure why we'd want to keep doing it, but maybe it would be entertaining. There's an assumption that we could kind of like peer in and record, which I suppose would be reasonable. You could kind of see these little beings living out their lives inside your little kind of mini simulation. And maybe you would check in on them, you know, kind of like the Kardashians or whatever, occasionally and see what's up. I don't know. The argument in particular kind of goes like, well, of course, everybody's going to want to have their own simulation. And so... There can be so many of these simulations that, you know, the odds are that there's way more simulations than like this kind of base reality where the simulations are all being simulated. And the further argument even goes more crazy that, in fact, inside the simulation, um, if the simulation is good enough, you'll get, you know, further simulations. <laughs> um, and so you'll have embedded simulations inside simulations. And so, you know, and so it's like, whoa. Uh, William Poundstone, who's one of my favorite authors, uh, notices that, in fact, when we make movies, we tend to make movies about the current time. And if, in fact, we are, uh, you know, the playthings of these advanced uh, future people who have made these simulations, why aren't they simulating their current time, right, which involves presumably a lot better technology than we have right now in our real world, uh, you know, why what what's going on why why isn't it a simulation where for example those kinds of simulations are possible within that reality uh and all sorts of other cool shit too right so mm, what's going on so it's sort of like doesn't quite make sense now on the other hand who knows maybe the people in the future chose this particular time like the random time chosen in the matrix which actually i'll point out was in fact the time when the movie was made but <clears throat> nevertheless uh, maybe they decided to go back to this crazy time to simulate it. But when? I don't know. Who knows? Um, uh, there's a guy who made a really nice video, which you can click on this link. Uh, Kipping, David Kipping, I think, who, who um, uh, you know, goes through all these arguments in much more detail. And he does a whole Bayesian uh, calculation that says, you know, the probability uh, that we're in the kind of base reality is uh, greater than 0.5 under some assumptions, unless, of course, we finally figure out how to make a simulation that is conscious or, you know, includes the ability to simulate consciousness, in which case everything flips. Anyway, watch the video if you're interested in this topic more. Here's my take, okay, which I just, it feels really obvious to me. And obviously we're getting really off in the weeds here. We'll get back to, you know, real facts here in a second. <sighs> My take is that it's just too darn hard to keep the story straight. Have you seen all the goofs on every single movie? Like you go to IMDb and there's pages and pages of inconsistencies. Um, and these are movies that people spend hours and days and years putting together painstakingly, making every shot. If we're simulating this stuff at any kind of reasonable scale, um, it's going to be full of glitches or it's going to be kind of the actual universe itself. That's the, nut, that's the nutshell of my argument. 
Okay. And so one assumption that's really important here is that uh, there has to be this basic assumption that you're simulating not the whole universe in the first place, but rather you're simulating an individual's unique kind of experience, right? It's literally, I'm, it's solipsism. I'm not actually here. I'm in this simulation and everything else is, is a construct, right? Everything else is, is simulated for me. Um, and so, uh, but, you know, if you do that, then you have to kind of be able to fill in the gaps. You have to, you know, every time I try to do something, every time I jump on the internet, every time I go out and have an experience, every time I get my telescope out and look at the stars, it has to fill in something there, right? And, and you know, to get all that straight and have it be consistent, okay, is really hard, right? You get all these goofs, you, you get these inconsistencies. And, uh, and you know, it's like if you try to actually run a game, you have to create a kind of set of rules and, and world that, that really does kind of operate consistently. Otherwise, what are you doing? A bunch of if-then statements? It just doesn't make any sense. And then there's this kind of assumption that, you know, you could, if, if, if somebody happened to start noticing these inconsistencies, you could just rewrite their memories, right? But, you know, actually, we know how memory works. Um, you can't, it's not like these little kind of components that you can just swap out of memory. It's all interconnected. It's a huge network. It's not possible to rewrite the memories, right? If, if, if the consciousness is of the form that I know it to be, that I subjectively experience it. And again, from what I know about objective reality and how brains work, all that makes sense. It's all consistent. This other idea that somehow somebody's rewriting my memories every millisecond to fix up all the mistakes that went along, it's just kind of hokey. It's a weird idea. It doesn't make any sense. Why is somebody doing this? It seems unsatisfying. Uh, you know, it, what? It's just crazy. Um, and, you know, there's so many ways in which things have to be consistent. I mean, I can literally just jump on the internet, download books that were written hundreds of years ago, cross-reference those against books that were written recently, talking about those books, talking about other things, talking about events, geological events, celestial events, things happening in the universe millions, billions of years ago. It's all kind of like there in some form or another. Um, and, you know, making all that up so that you can keep the facts straight is going to be a major, 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 major undertaking. And realistically speaking, you know, especially when you start talking about science and you start talking about astronomy, you know, the actual probability of like, you know, getting all those facts right. And again, this recourse of like rewriting all my memories just because you got the facts wrong. That's really hard too. you know, you have to come up with something new to rewrite. It's just, it's insane. It doesn't make any sense. I'm sorry. It's a stupid idea. It really is. It's just like, it all falls apart to me. I just don't see why anybody believes this thing. It's just like, you know, this doesn't make any sense. You just haven't thought about it clearly. Um, it's, it's impossibly difficult to keep the story straight. So the bottom line is that, you know, uh, you need reality to keep the story straight. Reality is, you know, basically physics and the universe and everything, history, all that stuff. That's what keeps our story straight. The fact that this objective reality that we've all kind of experienced and taken parts of and tried to put together and started to, to talk about and keep some kind of consistent understanding, all that stuff does add up. It does tell a consistent story. Um, the facts are straight in some level. You know, it's always weird stuff. There's always noise. There's always sort of random experiences. But really, when you look hard, there really haven't been a lot of well-documented cases of like truly weird stuff happening that doesn't really have another explanation, right? People look for that. They love it. They love it. We love the weird things, the unexplained mysteries of the universe. But really, uh, you know, if you're kind of inclined towards science, I think you can feel pretty confident that everything, once you dig into it far enough, really does have a pretty reasonable explanation. That's my subjective experience. So if it is a simulation, it is a simulation that is essentially on the scale of the universe. And if it's on that scale, who cares? I keep forgetting about these stupid glasses. 
a glitch in the matrix or just me forgetting to take off my glasses that kind of reflect so you can't really see my eyes and my eyes are important. Ah. So let's get back to talking about stuff that matters. <laughs> Consensus, 